in 2023. Let's talk about it on this edition of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. Our Locked on Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Thank you guys as always for tuning in wherever you're getting your podcast. Hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to get an update whenever we post new content. And stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter at RichieBrad36 and the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. All right, we're wrapping up our series breaking down positional by positional breakdowns, the camp battles, all that good stuff, but also turning this into its own episode and talking about the secondary as a whole, because I look at this unit and I feel like there's a lot of really awesome potential here for something special. And when I say special, I'm not saying like one of the greatest, the sun levels have ever had. When I say special, I mean, you look at the transition that, Arizona State is going through right now with new coaches, with new players, transfer portal, and the incoming uh, freshman class and everything. Like, there's a lot that's going on. But the secondary A has a lot returning from last year that is going to make it one of the strongest units on the team. But B, the guys that are coming back are really, really good. We're going to talk about them here. So that's where I want to start is the main returning guys from last year and what they're going to bring to the table. So I think it starts with Ro Torrance. Torrance was a transfer from Auburn last year and he did not take long to blossom. He very quickly worked his way up the depth chart. And by the end of the season was the team's number one corner. He was a lockdown guy. He was somebody that you could reliably tell to erase somebody from the game plan and he would do it. Now he wasn't perfect by any means. I mean, he he still was definitely someone who was who was adjusting to the speed of the game because he was a redshirt freshman and he needed that time to be able to truly get to where he needed to be. But now that he's entered, or excuse me, his redshirt sophomore, now he's in his redshirt junior year. He's clearly clearly more comfortable with what he's doing. He understands the intricacies of the way he plays his role and. I think that 2023 is going to be a big time breakout year for him. I think he's going to be one of the breakout players across the conference. I really, really like road torrents. If you're not on the road torrents train already, I encourage you to get on it because great things are coming for this young man. And I have no doubt that his best days are ahead of him. Now across from him is an abundance of really good talent. We got to talk about Ed Woods first. In my opinion, Woods is the guy who, also towards the end of the year was locking down a starting gig opposite of Roe Torrance. He is also redshirt junior. Uh, both of these guys are over six feet. Now Torrance is six, three, but Ed Woods is still six foot tall. He plays the position. Well, he's confident. He's smooth. He's an operator. I think he's got some plus ball skills too. And if he's able to take that next step as well, you've got one, two corners right there, but it's not done yet because you got a great nickel guy too. And not just a great nickel corner, but a guy that I think we're going to be talking about years down the road as one of the better defensive backs that the Sun Devils were able to host. And that's Jordan Clark. Clark is going into his redshirt senior year. This is his big hurrah. This is his chance to make some ways to get himself into the NFL. And if he plays the way that he has played up to this point, I think the NFL is absolutely in his future. I'm not saying Jordan Clark's some Pro Bowl guy, but I do think that this is, at a minimum, a rosterable player. Like, this is a guy that you keep for depth, you keep for special teams, maybe he starts one day. Jordan Clark's a very, very talented individual. You can tell that he's got those NFL bloodlines. While he doesn't hit like his dad, he certainly plays defensive back at a a very high level. I think that the combination of Clark, Torrance, and Woods gives you just a terrific three punch combo at the corner spot, put Clark in the nickel Torrance woods outside. You feel great about going up against opposing receivers, but then you feel even better 
with what you've got over the top at the safety spot. Chris Edmonds is returning. He played very well last year and led the team with three interceptions. He is absolutely one of the starters for this team. And he is one of the more underrated pillars to this secondary, I think. Uh, looking at, we've been referencing um, rlands.com for their depth chart, quote unquote depth chart. And they've had him as their top guy for a minute now. But I encourage you, or excuse me, I totally got that backwards. They they have put him underneath two other guys that we'll talk about momentarily. But I encourage you to remember how good Chris Edmonds is. This is also a guy that I believe could be playing himself into some NFL conversations down the road if he is able to continue building off of what was a very successful season a year ago. He spent his previous campaign over at Sanford where he was ball hawk there. He had 10 interceptions. He had three last year. If he does another few interceptions this year, I mean, clearly he's got ball hawking skills. Like they translated from Sanford to Arizona State. If they stay there, at that point, it's undeniable that the dude is just a heat-seeking missile and finds his way to the football and records an interception. He is absolutely one of the starters here. Now, with that in mind, there there is some really intriguing depth at the safety spot that we will talk about momentarily. But bottom line here is that Chris Edmonds is a very, very, very good safety. I don't think there's any reason to be sleeping on him. Now, some guys I want to bring up real quick that are also returning that I'm intrigued to see what they can bring. Mainly, Isaiah Johnson, Mason Williams are at the top of my list for guys that are returning that I want to see what they can bring. Isaiah Johnson is so much talent at the position. 6'1", 190. He's textbook what you look for. There's flashes of brilliance in there. You're just waiting for him to put it all together because I think when he finally does put it all together, you're going to be talking about a very, very top-end prospect at the cornerback spot. Again, I'm I'm not going to say like first round or anything. This is definitely a guy who's got NFL capabilities if he can just find a way to get there but until then he's in a great situation where he can continue to refine his skills and get ready to be called up eventually but right now as a redshirt sophomore I think Isaiah Johnson is one of the most important depth pieces on this on this depth chart in this secondary right now I love what he brings to the table Mason Williams I think was definitely a a really nice bring back for the team. Um, Definitely in that reserve role, but a lot of guys were, they were rotating a lot of players last year. And you got to remember there were other places or places, uh, players as well that were getting time last year, like uh, Corey Bethley and Tomarcus Davis that were keeping uh, Mason Williams down the depth chart. You had the twins, uh, the Markham, the Markham twins, Kawan and Keon that we're also rotating in there. Mason Williams, I would feel comfortable with him being a starter if he were able to win a spot over. I feel very confident that he's still going to be a big-time contributor for this team. And in a best-case scenario, we hold on to him for another year. And then in 2024, he becomes a starter for you when you eventually obviously have to start letting guys go to the NFL or go because of, uh, running about uh, running out of eligibility and whatnot, but Mason Williams also a very important player. Encourage you not to forget about him either. These guys that are returning right now for the Sun Devils are going to be so utterly important for the success of the su- success that the secondary is going to have in 2023. This is a great looking unit, and yeah, I love it. I love 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 the secondary that the Sun Devils have right now. But I also love. Everything that FanDuel brings for me. If you have not started using FanDuel yet and you're a betting person, make a fast break to FanDuel for the NBA playoffs because they're almost over. And right now, new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500 back and bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. What I love about FanDuel seems to be limitless, just like all of the different betting options and customized parlays that they provide for you. It's a safe and secure app, and you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on all the playoff action than America's number one sportsbook. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. 
That's FanDuel.com slash locked on and use that promo code. Or excuse me, uh, FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get that no sweat, no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thank you guys, as always, for tuning in to Locked On Sun Levels. Wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on those notifications. Make sure that you guys continue to tune in as we get into the heat of all of our off-season talk. There's lots to be had, lots of quarterback conversation, a lot of pass catchers, coaches, all that good stuff. We're getting into all of it starting tomorrow. So hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Back into our conversation. It's not just the returning guys that are very, very important. There's a lot of guys that are coming in as well, both as freshmen and as transfers. And we're going to start with two of the most important transfers on the team right now that are coming in to the safety position, which are the two guys that are currently listed ahead of uh, Chris Edmonds, according to rlands.com. And that is Xavier Alford and Shamari Simmons. Alford transferring in from USC slash Texas. I can't remember where he was last, but he's played with both. Dude has, I think he was with USC. Dude has shown some ball hawking capabilities. And that's probably what's got people the most excited about him. At six foot 190, dude has great cover skills. Can drop is able to take care of his assignment, lock down his zone, record interceptions, record breakups. He does all that good stuff. I think he's probably one of the starting safeties. I think that it's got to be Chris Edmonds for sure. And I think Alfred is probably the other guy, but you can't sleep on Simmons. Shamari Simmons transferring from Austin Pay. He's a rock star. He also has some interception capabilities. And with those three alone on the very back end of the year defense, you have to like the idea that you're going to be recording a lot of interceptions. And that's the thing that's got me really, really excited about these three right now. I look at Edmund Alfred Simmons, and I see one of the biggest points of strength on this roster. That might be something I need to break down is taking a look at the biggest strengths and the biggest weaknesses. I feel like I've done that before. I think I might need to rehash that again because looking at this safety spot, I'm not sure how many other positions are stronger, at least in terms of just one, two, three compared to safety, probably tight end wide receiver. That might be it. This safety trio is dynamic. If you want to include Jordan Clark back there as well, because he did play some free safety, a year ago, it's a hard position to beat. But beyond them is a lot of depth, too. You have R.J. Reagan coming back. You have Gene Boyd III coming back. You've got Tariq Luckett is coming back. You've got Willie Hartz is coming back. It's lots of depth that's returning. Some senior depth, too. Some veteran established depth here. That is going to give Arizona State that little extra juice when it comes to the veteran presence, the depth, the established players on this team, you love that that all is coming back. I'm also really interested with all the freshmen. There are six freshmen coming in right now. Montana Warren is the guy who's been grabbing all the hype. He is going to be one of the safeties for the team. He's 6'3", 180, three-star out of Marshall, Texas. This is This is a guy that I think we need to keep our eyes out on down the road to eventually be a starter. I really, really like Montana Warren. He's been a a lot of, a lot of the talk of the town during the spring practices. Keep an eye out for Montana Warren, but you've got Keith Abney. You've got Sean Russ, Josiah Cox, Lennox Lawson, Keontes Bradley, six incoming freshmen for Arizona state. You've got Brian Carrington, the defensive backs coach who has, already really started to establish himself as a great recruiter for the team. And I want to see what he can do in a full-time role with all these guys. He's, he's definitely starting to find his niche and I want to see him continue to imprint on these kids and develop them into full-time starters. Who knows, potentially like impact players too. 
I am very, very intrigued with Brian Carrington. I think it's one of the more underrated storylines of the of the offseason for Arizona State is Carrington and his defensive backs room, the safeties, the corners, the nickels, whatever. What Brian Carrington is going to be able to do with these kids is going to be so intriguing to watch. And I encourage you guys to pay attention to that because I know it's easy to get washed up with the offensive stuff and the quarterbacks alone, but defensive back is going to be where it's at. A few other guys I want to mention real quick. Uh, uh, D Ford is also a transfer from Austin pay. He's going to be one of the backup nickel guys as well. Alfonso Taylor is also returning for the team as one of the primary safeties as well. You add him with Edmonds, Alfred Simmons, Forget about it. Safety is ridiculously deep for the team. All of those guys, that's a lot of names I named. I don't know how much we're going to see the freshmen, but it'll be really interesting to see who's able to stand out. Because while I do anticipate Roe Torrance, Ed Woods, Jordan Clark, Chris Edmonds to be certified studs, I do not think that that means there's not going to be room for anybody else to stand out. In fact, I think that this is going to be the best opportunity possible for those other guys to stand out as well. I'm going to be paying extra attention to the defensive backs battle here, the corners and the safeties. I think that these guys could even find ways to be interchangeable and get on the field in more ways than one, not just at one of those positions, but just on the field in general. This is a great looking secondary. Once again, thank you guys, as always, for tuning in. Wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications to get an update whenever we post new content, and stay in touch for the remainder of the offseason because we got lots to cover, guys. Make sure that you find that subscribe button and stay locked in. All right, some closing thoughts here. For the 100th time, I think this is a very special group. I think there's going to be some major fireworks this year. Roe Torrance is one of the guys that I would pick to be a first team Pac-12 player. If uh, here's the thing, there's obviously 11 other teams and there's lots of great defensive backs in this conference. I mean, Colorado alone has, uh, Oh my God, I can never remember either of the kids names, the top. I want to say Kamani something. I don't know. They have the top guy from this year and the top guy from last year. Like the top overall prospects are at Colorado now. You'll have Cormani McLean is one of them. And is it Travis Hunter? I can't remember. I'm I'm just going to look it up because I'm so tired of being ill-informed. Yeah, Travis Hunter. Travis Hunter and Cormani McLean, who I remembered all by myself. Between those two alone, that's stiff competition. You've got... Several several other programs, though. USC, Oregon, UCLA, uh, Washington always has defensive backs. Oregon State had the best defense in the conference last year. There's going to be a lot of competition, but I truly do believe that Roe Torrance is going to be one of the top guys in the conference, and he's going to be somebody that you're going to need to keep an eye out on, not just ASU fans, but I think that going into opposing games, people are going to have to understand that number nine is absolutely an eraser. He is locked down. He potentially could develop some ball skills this year. He only had one interception a year ago, but he was breaking the ball up all the time. You're going to you're gonna have to know where number nine is on the field at all times. That's just the life of opposing offensive coordinators. Jordan Clark, I would love to see him find a way to compete for a, for a all-pack 12 kind of mention here. Chris Edmonds would be awesome. I think it's probably between Torrance and Clark. Clark will definitely get the help of being a veteran on the team and whatnot. I don't know. It's just going to be a very intriguing situation to watch unfold here for Arizona State. Bottom line, though, this is a really good-looking secondary. I think that you should easily be in the top half. The only way they're not in the top half is if there's just no pass rush which leads to breakdowns in coverage because you can only cover for so long. If there's even semblance of a pass rush, and we've already talked about those guys, I do think that there are some dogs in that pass rush. If there's even semblance of a pass rush, the secondary is going to be good. 
I think this is going this is going to be a defense that surprises a lot of people. I think they're going to go into the year as one of the worst defenses in the Pac-12, as well they should, based off of what happened last year. I think they end up in the top half of the conference by the end of the year, though. There's just too many good players here. There's too much continuity, and there's there's so much going on in a very good way in the defense in the defensive coaches room with Brian Ward as a defense coordinator and with Brian Carrington as the defensive backs coach. I think those are going to be two guys that are going to be able to get the most out of what's there. And I do think that there's more there than what me see. I. So keep an eye out for those guys, because this is going to be, this is going to be a unit that's going to be a lot better than people might realize. I hope that I can be the person that tuned you into them earlier than anyone else. But is there anybody that I missed? Who are you guys looking forward to in the secondary? What are your thoughts on the secondary? Let me know wherever you're getting your, your uh, wherever you're getting your podcast. And thank you guys, as always, for following along with the Locked on Sunnables podcast. That's all that I got for you guys here today. Remember, wherever you're getting your podcast, to hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. Of course, stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter. You can find me at richiebrad 36 and the podcast at LO underscore Sunnables. That's all I got for you guys today. I will see you guys tomorrow as we continue to trudge through the offseason. Speaking of which, quick little housekeeping. Locked on Sun Levels will be going down to three episodes a week for the offseason. This will be a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday episode uh, schedule is what I meant to say. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday will be your three episodes a week for Locked on Sun Levels for the offseason. That's all that I got. Until next time, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun Levels.